whatever. We're here to talk about PPD. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm gonna be comparing the photo paper direct transfer papers. I'm gonna be doing the light versus dark. So a few months ago, I did do the battle of the transfer papers where I compared the PPD with the Avery. And that one actually did really well. So I finally got around to doing the light versus dark for the PPD since clearly the PPD was the winner in that other video. And speaking of PPD versus Avery, I did want to give you a little update on what the shirts look like now. They have been washed a few times, so that'll give you an idea on how the shirts hold up. So this one right here is the PPD Light. It still has a little bit of wrinkles, but it hasn't been pressed since it was pressed that second time in that other video. So it still held up pretty well. It has its little wrinkles, but it's honestly not that bad. And now for the Avery. The Avery is a different story. Y'all ready for this? This one's the Avery. Look at that. No transfer at all. But in the shirt's defense, I did use this to sleep once. And once I took it off, it did have a little bit of a crack. And the crack like bothered me. I was like, it's just going to keep cracking. So I decided to just completely remove it. So this whole part was removed. All this section obviously stuck on for dear life because I could not for the life of me take it out. But it does have cracks. So this one, hell no. Mm -mm. It was kind of my fault because, you know, you're not supposed to stretch transfers because they do say it will crack but still look it it did not hold up just the top and the bottom but today's video is focusing on the ppd light versus dark i have them right here i'm not going to show you what they look like now so you can keep watching i decided to do it on a pink shirt that way we get to see if it like makes a difference like the color because obviously it's light versus dark so i wanted to choose something that was like right in the middle so i chose something that wasn't too light or too dark and i didn't want to do a white because the other video was white you know so it's just going to be kind of like repetitive and also the way I transferred these was completely different than the way I did it in that other video. I followed the instructions that came with these transfers to a T. So I used a silicone sheet instead of a Teflon sheet. I used different heat settings. I didn't use my easy matte press. Uh, what else? I washed it differently. I had different washing settings. So yeah, keep watching to see if that makes a difference. And yeah, let's get started. First, I'm going to start with the light transfer. So go ahead and take a sheet and put it into your printer and make sure the logo is printed towards the back. And for this, I'm going to be using Design Space to print and cut my transfer, but you can use any other program as long as it lets you print out images. So in Design Space, go ahead and click Upload in the left-hand corner. Click Upload Image, Browse, and then choose any image that you want to transfer. I chose this Spice World logo because you know girl power. So go ahead and click complex and then continue. This image is already a PNG, which means it doesn't have a background. But if your image does have a background, you're gonna have to go in and select and erase the background or else it's not gonna cut it correctly. So right here, I'm just previewing to see what the cut is gonna look like, making sure it looks correct. Once that's done, I'm gonna click continue and then save as a print, then cut image. Then I'm going to click on the image that I uploaded and click insert images. Once the image pops up, I'm going to resize it. The max size you can cut with print and cut on here is 9.25 by 6.75. So I'm making the height of mine 6.75 and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's actually within those dimensions. You can do any size you want as long as it's less than those dimensions or else it won't cut it for you. So then we're going to click make it. Since we're working with the light transfer, this does have to be mirrored. So make sure that mirror is on and then click continue. So we're going to send it to the printer. And then in the drop down menu, we're going to choose our printer. Make sure your printer is on. And then we're going to turn off the add bleed because we don't want that. And then we're going to click print. So once it's printed, I just let it sit for a few minutes to dry. Once it's printed, we're going to go back onto Design Space and click Browse All Materials. Then in the search bar, we're going to type in Printable Iron-On Light. Make sure you click on the light and not the dark. That's very important. You'll see why later. So make sure it's light and then you click Done. Place the transfer on the edge of your Cricut mat and then load it onto your machine. And then go ahead and start the cutting process. The machine is first going to scan the guides. That's what the black lines are for, so those are very important. It's going to scan it and then it's going to start to cut. Once it's done, just unload it and then carefully remove it from your mat. With this, you have to be very careful because I noticed that it was very delicate. As you can see in the top, it was like ripping. So with this, you have to be very careful. 
And then once everything is off, try to roll your mat and remove your transfer that way. Try not to pull on your transfer too much because then it's gonna end up like mine all curled. So try to roll your mat instead of rolling the paper. Then we're moving on to the dark transfer. Go ahead and place it into your printer as well. Make sure the logo is towards the back. This one has the blue logo. And we're gonna do the same process, except for this one, we're not gonna mirror it, because this one does not need to be mirrored. So we're just pretty much gonna do everything the same. Make sure that bleeding is off. And we're gonna also let this one dry. And same thing for this one, use printable iron-on light, not dark. You're gonna see why right now, but make sure it's the light one, not the dark. So I just sent it to my machine to cut. So this video in the corner is actually showing that the setting for the printable dark didn't cut through. So don't use that one because that was a total fail. And once again, you have to be very careful with peeling it off because this one did end up having little fuzzies in the corner. This one was much harder to take off. I have no idea why. And this one I actually rolled the mat, which is why my transfer came out flat. So always roll your mat and not your project. So these are the little fuzzies that I was talking about. I just took some scissors and trimmed them. The light transfer did have some of these too, but not as much as this one did. I have no idea why that happened. Maybe it has to do with the cutting settings. I'm not sure, but it was just fast. I just trimmed them with scissors. So here they are after they've been printed and cut. This one is the light transfer and this one is the dark transfer. Obviously for the light transfer, I had to mirror the image. I'm not sure if you can tell, but my picture did come out a little bit pixelated. I couldn't find a high quality version of this graphic, but I really wanted to use it, so I just stuck with it. So even though it is a little bit pixelated, I feel like it might give it a vintagey vibe, so that doesn't really bother me. So other than this one needing to be mirrored and not this one, I feel like color-wise, both are actually pretty much the same. This one is slightly more opaque in this area it's like a little bit slightly more yellow than this not sure if it was like the ink running out or what but this one is just slightly more i'm not sure if it's going to be able to show on the shirt if it's like going to make a difference this one does look a little bit more washed out in comparison to this one but it's not big of a difference unless you're like really staring you can't really tell so this image does have some white like it's a light blue, but it's like a light color. So I did choose to do a pink shirt just to see how that whiteness will transfer to it. I know with transfers, like if you use a colored shirt, the color of the shirt is going to peek through the transfer. So I specifically chose a pink shirt just to see if that would make a difference. So these two are transferred in two different ways. So we might have two different outcomes for each one. Let's get started and see how that goes. This time around, I'm just gonna be using a table instead of my easy press mat. And I'm just putting some old t-shirts over it so it could protect the table from the heat. And then I'm gonna take my shirt and just lay it as flat as possible over those old t-shirts. And then I'm gonna take a lint remover and just go over where I'm gonna put the transfer just so it could clean it up. Then I'm gonna take my easy press and just preheat the shirt. The settings for the easy press are 375 degrees for 13 seconds. That's what the instruction said on the PPD, so that's exactly what I'm going to go with this time. Then take a ruler and measure 3 inches below the neckline. This is a t-shirt ruler that I got from Etsy, which is a complete game changer. So if you do your own shirts, definitely look into this because it is bomb and makes it way easier. Then take your transfer and slightly fold it and mark it in the back so you could see where the middle is. And then just preheat it again, just the section where it's going to go, and put the transfer facing down. Then take a silicone sheet, this one came with the PPD transfers, just place it over the transfer to protect it and then just press it down and put lots and lots of pressure on it. For the light transfer, you have to peel it hot so just remove the silicone sheet and carefully remove the backing on the transfer. Take your time with this because you don't want to accidentally lift the transfer as you're peeling. In my last video, somebody actually gave me this tip to stretch out the shirt after it's been pressed. And honestly, I think that's a game changer. So slightly stretch it, don't stretch it too much because then you might crack the transfer, but definitely slightly stretch it after it's pressed. So then I'm flattening out the image again and just going in and pressing it again for a few seconds. And that second press might have been a mistake because when I went to peel it off, some of it kind of like looked like it melted. So definitely be careful since this is such a high heat setting. And I'm just going in and stretching it again. Now for the dark transfer, turn it over and carefully peel off the backing. 
For this, you have to take your time because it's kind of hard to get to the edge. But once you do it, you just carefully pull it off. Once again, remove any lint that the shirt might have and then just preheat that section and just measure 3 inches below. Then take your transfer and slightly fold it. Don't press too hard because you don't want the line to be there and just set it up in the middle. And take the silicone sheet and place it over and then just press down again using very high pressure. For this one, you do have to wait 30 seconds before peeling. So after 30 seconds, peel it and then slightly stretch it. For this one, I went over it a second time for a few seconds as well and then waited 30 seconds before taking off the silicone sheet. And this one definitely did not burn like the other one. So it's safe to say that they both reacted differently to the heat. Here they are side by side. This is the light transfer and this is the dark transfer. Right off the bat, you can see major differences. The main one is I feel like the way it transferred onto the fabric. This one feels like it blends more into the fabric. It looks like it's all one piece. This one kind of looks like it's sitting on top of it. And also the color, you could tell it's straight up different shades of blue. The navy right here is more dominant than over here. This one, you have more blues going on as opposed to over here. The white parts on this one did blend with the shirt. So you see part of the shirt peeking through with this one, like down here and all of this. Over here, all of the transfer is like completely on the shirt. None of the shirt from the bottom is peeking through. But this one I think was burned a little too much because it's definitely textured. And you can see sections that were like practically melted off. Like there's little bubbles. And I don't know if you could tell right here, it's like a little bit wrinkly because it got burned. So I did follow the directions on this one exactly. So I feel like the second press that I went with it on this one was the one that screwed it up. But yeah, I like how this one blends with the shirt, but that texture is a big no-no. And another difference is the image quality. This one completely stayed the same, I guess, with the way I printed it. Because you still kind of see the pixelation that the photo had. And over here, I'm not sure if it like lost its quality, but it like did reduce the pixelation. Because this one it looks less pixelated than this one. I like how this one lays. I like the color of it. I just wish it didn't have the pixelation. So I'm not sure how these are going to hold up in the wash. So let's see how that goes. After making these, you have to wait at least 24 hours before you can wash them. So I waited the 24 hours and I wanted to give it a wash test. So I'm turning them inside out and I'm throwing them into the wash. And I'm going to use the normal washing machine setting. Because last time I used the delicate setting and that did not turn out good. So let's see if the setting makes a difference. Now would you look at that? This is right after they came out of the wash. This is the light transfer and it completely lifted up from the edges. Like I could put my fingers in there. Look, you could straight up see inside it. And for the dark transfer, nothing really happened to it. It pretty much stayed intact except for like the edges they slightly lifted. But definitely not as bad as the light transfer did. Here they are after they've air dried. Like I stated before, the light transfer just straight up detached on the sides. Like on the top and the bottom, you could still feel that they're like secure on there. And then this one, the dark transfer, it did attach. Only like part of the sides did like lift up. I'm going to try to repress this one to see if it makes a difference and if it still adheres, like if there's still adhesive there. Uh, let me show you the inside of the shirt to see if there's like any wrinkles or anything. Here they are inside out. I'm not sure if you can tell, but in this one, the light transfer, you could actually see the color peeking through. Like it actually has some yellow bleeding onto the shirt. Not sure if like the yellow bled or what, but this one you could see it. This one you can't, the dark transfer. I feel like this one, since the transfer was peeled, I think it had some sort of like backing on it. So you're not going to be able to see it on this side. Not like it matters because you're not going to see the inside of it, but I just wanted to share that with you. And also none of these seem to have any wrinkles in comparison to when I transferred them last time. Like when I did the Avery versus PPD. That was like one of the main issues in the last one was like all the wrinkles after it was washed. But clearly this one doesn't have any, which is a good thing. Even though this one and the sides are lifted up, it doesn't look like there's major wrinkles, you know. So I'm going to try repressing them and see if it makes a difference. So this is a dark transfer tee. I turned it inside out, like right side up, and I just realized that it actually bled through in the back. I'm not sure if you can tell it's like yellow, but clearly this bled through it. Like because it was washed inside out. But yeah, look at it. Like I did wait 24 hours to wash it, so you would think it would be dry, you know. And it wouldn't bleed, so it sucks that it bled through. Luckily, it's yellow and you can't really tell, but like, dude, come on. This one was my favorite. The dark transfer one was the one that was supposed to be the winner, but down some points, because look at that. Come on. So here I am pressing the light transfer once again, just so I could try and save it. 
and I'm using a lighter setting just so I don't burn it again and this pretty much didn't do anything because as you can see the sides were still lifted up so I went in to attempt it two more times to see if that would help and it pretty much didn't do anything so I'm assuming the adhesive on the transfer just like completely gave out so that one is pretty much a lost cause I could have gone in with a higher setting but I'm telling you I had a feeling I was going to burn it and I didn't want to burn it on camera so I'd rather just have it stay like this than be like melted off you know and I went over the dark transfer as well just to even it out and that did help like the edges that were lifting. So here we have the final results. We have the light versus the dark. Clearly there's a winner. I'm sure you guessed which one is the winner and obviously it's the dark, the dark transfer. This one, I would have easily given it a 10 out of 10, but you saw the little like mistake that happened, which was it bled through the back, which kind of sucks because I would have easily given it like 100% because it didn't really lift in the sides, which is good. It's not wrinkly or anything. The color seems to pop. It is a little pixelated because of the photo that I used, but it seemed to adhere well to the shirt. So the only issue was definitely that it bled through. I will say it's a dark transfer, so maybe it is meant to be used only on dark fabrics. Like go with a dark gray or a navy or black. Maybe if it bleeds, it's not you're not gonna be able to tell, but like, come on. This shirt was cute. Luckily, you can't really tell. It's like, eh, it, it's in the bag. You can't really tell, but this would have been, I feel like, a perfect score if it wasn't for that bleeding. But, like, just imagine this image would have had some black and that black would have bled through the back. Obviously, you would have been able to tell. So, I guess maybe it depends on the colors because clearly none of the blue transferred, only the yellow. Not sure if in the wash it, like, stuck to it too much, you know? I don't know, but this one definitely kept the quality of the image. It definitely looks more like it did in the computer as opposed to the light one over here. This one, it kind of like muted it a little bit. Honestly, I don't even know what the hell happened with this one. Like things were going quite well. It did kind of burn in the beginning, but those were the temperatures that the instructions for PPD said. So I don't know what happened. And it was rough, but now after I did the second press, it like smoothed it out. There are a few parts that are still a little bit like textured, but definitely not like in the beginning. And I really thought that the these were gonna add here again once I pressed it a second time. I didn't want to use high settings just because I didn't want to burn it off since I kind of burned it off over here, you know? It's kind of disappointing that these sides didn't stick because this one wasn't looking too bad and what I don't get is that this one over here the one from the last video this is the light PPD as well and this one seems to be stuck in it like you don't see it lifted like this one lifted so maybe the light PPD shouldn't have high settings in comparison to the dark PPD because on this one I did use lower settings I don't know what's going on that this one when I didn't really follow the instructions came out better than the ones where I followed instructions but I will say the dark one did come out better. So maybe with the light, you just have to be a little bit more careful. Other than that, I don't think they're that bad. Still have to play around with these. Still getting used to using transfers because it is hard. I did discover this new thing, but I don't think I'm going to do it because it's like a whole other expense. It's called sublimation. So that's like transferred onto the shirt as well. But I feel like it's painted onto it. It's like part of the fabric, you know, so that can be stretched and everything. You know how these you can't stretch it. So yeah, that one, it's like becomes a part of the garment. But you need like a special printer for that, special paper. It's just uh, this whole other ball game. I'm just not going to get into that, but that is where it's at. I think that is way, way, way better than transfer paper, like a thousand percent. I'm not going to get into it because it's just not my thing, but yeah. And also another thing I will mention, I think you may have a different results if you're using an actual heat press, you know, like those big ass machines. I'm using the Cricut Easy Press because that's what is convenient for me. That's like what I have. I don't want that big ass machine because it's not something that I need. But since that one is giving you like major, major pressure, that might be a little bit different than, you know, you physically doing the pressure yourself, you know? So it all depends. It also depends on the fabric you use. Like these two are 100% cotton, so definitely that shouldn't be an issue, but yeah. So here are the light versus dark. Clearly the dark was a winner. Not sure what the hell happened with the light, but I will say don't give up on the light since it did work on this other one, kind of. We just have to figure out what settings work for the light because it's not as bad. And PPD does beat out Avery, so just putting that out there so i really hope you guys enjoyed this comparison hopefully you learned a little bit and you'll try it out for yourself let me know what settings you use what works for you what doesn't work for you because i need all the tips i can get you know i'm still learning on all this thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to leave me your thoughts in the comments give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you're not already and yeah i'll catch you in my next video bye